Slicer Shenanigans sends sane users spiraling. It's another single issue episode. You guys will like it. Let's get into it. We got an interesting one here. We've got reprinted 3D, patron and friend of the channel, Pete, here who is dealing with issues with Prusa Slicer. He's got a part here and it is commanding a color change. He's not certain why, and for a little bit there, I didn't know why either. This is something that theoretically shouldn't happen. We can see that for the green itself, just toolhead one is not used during this print at all, except on this very specific spot. But we got the actual 3MF file so we can look at this together and make some changes to make it better. This is a file for a tool holder system for the Prusa XL of which Pete has a full five tool head variant. The first thing that stood out to me is it's listed as a tool tool head variant in the actual settings itself. But when we went to the printer section, it says five. So there have been some custom changes made to this. And while that definitely shouldn't cause the issue that we see here where it's a totally different color, there's gray all of a sudden. It is something to note that utilizing the right profiles from the beginning, no matter what slicer that you're on, matters. And what else matters is that my name's Grant, this is 3D Musketeers and Print Fix Rider. We help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. If you are going through issues with your 3D printers, please reach out to us. We'd love to help you out and feature it on an episode of Print Fix Friday. You can do so by tagging us on those social medias. We love it when you film a video and tag us in the description of it so we can see what's going on. And if we have enough time, we'll jump on a video call, get that solved for you and use it in a Print Fix Friday, which is always a lot of fun. Pete here threw over the 3MF saying, dude, I don't get it. Why is this happening? Can you help? He comes from Orca Slicer, which is, while technically based on Prusa Slicer, fundamentally different in the way that they look. They're different enough so if you're used to one and you try to use the other, it can be complicated. And specifically for Prusa printers, where are you going to find tuned profiles? Well, theoretically tuned profiles. Prusa Slicer. And I know a lot of you are in this situation where you're trying out a slicer for the first time. It feels different. And because it feels different, it doesn't feel right. You're not knowledgeable of where things are. This can be frustrating. And if you want, let us know in the comments and we will do intro slicer series on some of the major slicers. We have done some in the past. We'll actually card to the most recent one of Prusa Slicer that we've done. But as you'll see, things have changed a lot since then. When we look at the file itself, the first thing that comes to mind when I'm just looking at it is the fact that it's at a really weird angle. He got the STL file from printables, loaded it in, and this is where it landed. And theoretically, that's okay, but for the XL, which has multiple bed tiles, which means it can heat up or cool down random sections on the build plate based on where the model is, you'd want this to be cordoned off into one area rather than over a bunch of tiles to keep it from using as much energy, keep it from needing to heat up as much of the build plate, and, well, it'll also get temperature faster because you're heating up less of the build plate to make it happen. We can see the part has been multi-material painted, as well as it having paint on supports. But when you go to actually slice it, we end up with this weird area where there is demanding a color change. And after a lot of attempts, it became obvious what happened. If we look down here, you'll see that there's a color change commanded. Something that is very valuable on single tool head machines where you want to change out the color of filament. But on the XL, you don't really need that feature because you can just go to a different head, assuming you have other heads to go to. But this occurs in such a way that it doesn't actually tell you anywhere else unless you notice that little symbol on your screen. And when you're new to the UI and UX of a slicer, it's very difficult to see that. But you might say, Grant, you can't accidentally do this. There's no way you can accidentally do this. Let me show you how this happens. Let's say you're moving the slider, see what's going on. You accidentally click off and then you go and accidentally click twice. This window pops up. You might say, okay, and then just click okay. You'll notice the machine just commanded another color change. The right thing to do when this window comes up is to actually hit cancel. And unfortunately, if you don't know that, 
There is no way to know that it has occurred. Now, when you go to slice the file, you'll see that there is filament needed from extruder one, and it's very, very, very little. And what we can see if we look at the color print section up here in the top left, that extruder one up to 10.6 millimeters is orange, and then above it is gray. It commanded a color change for an extruder that isn't used. And in fact, the slicer tries to warn you, but it is such a small warning that if you're not looking for it, you can totally miss it. And in fact, Prusa's own support missed this too. Reprinted said that they reached out to Prusa support to try to figure out what went wrong. They sent over the 3MF file and Prusa support could not figure it out. And they determined that it was a bug in the slicer. While it is not technically a bug, certainly a little bit of UI and UX tweaking is in order. And while there's not much that I can do to change any of that. I am certainly not a programmer, coder, or anything like that. I'm just a guy on the internet that reminds you to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any tips or tricks for those that are using Prusa Slicer, or I'm sure there'll be some Prusa Slicer devs watching this. If there are any features that you'd like to see in Prusa Slicer, get them down in those comments. But I'm someone that's used Prusa Slicer long enough that the general system of it just makes sense to me. And Orca is actually the more complicated one for me. Do you believe that Prusa is more complicated than Orca? I'd love to know your thoughts down below. But looking at this model, it would behoove us to have some sort of further warning. Just like Joe Clippy will come up at the bottom right corner of the slicer when you first start it to give you the tip of the day. He can also come up and give you other tips and tricks throughout your print and, you know, potentially ask you certain questions. It would be great if Joe Clippy here was able to say, hey, you're commanding a color change. Sure you wanna do that? That would be incredibly valuable. And while this does solve the problem and get the machine to print perfectly, you can see here that it's only using extruders two and three, we weren't done just yet. We made just a few changes, including making sure that we change the color of extruder one and extruder three. One of the big things that made it difficult for us to initially look at it is that Extruder 1 and Extruder 3 were both color-coded orange. So you saw that little gray line, but you didn't understand why. If they were colored differently, you'd understand this. Also, please don't ever use black as a color inside of Prusa Slicer. Or Prusa, can you please fix the fact that it just looks like Vanta black? I can't see any detail on the model. I really want to see more detail. I could have used a little more detail. <laughs> We made some more changes, including going to a five tool head machine rather than a two tool head machine with it added for the five extra extruders. We can see that there are some adjustments made, which are just changing the extruder color inside of the slicer to make my life just a little bit easier. But it's when we get to the actual part itself that we do see some extra changes. Things like making sure that it's got enough bottom layers so you can support that bottom. Oh! an extra perimeter for some added strength, extra perimeters if needed in some thin areas. That way you can ensure that vertical wall thickness and the seam position is moved to the rear. Infill, which Pete had already done, he goes to adaptive cubic. I do not like grid infill and I firmly believe it should be banned in this industry because it is truly the worst infill. Adaptive cubic, in my opinion, is the best infill to use because it gives you really good strength while not taking forever like gyroid does where gyroid is isotropic where it is exactly the same strength in every dimension adaptive cubic is not but it uses straight lines rather than squiggles those squiggles take a bunch of time he added from the normal 10 or 15 percent went up to 20 percent and then we did change the fill angle and bridging angle on the machine this is to add a little bit of extra strength. Support material was very simple. They were painted on supports. They were organic. But the big change that we did is under the multiple extruders. I want to give a shout out to Ben over at InPhase Industries, aka IPIND3D over on Printables. He's also a fan of ours in our Discord, which is available at the $10 tier and higher. Links in that description down below. Who turned us on to changing the wipe tower extruder traditionally it is set to zero so whatever tool is on the xl that is what is used for the wipe tower and traditionally that's okay but if you're using the xl for what a lot of us use it for you know multi-material you don't want that you want to make sure that your wipe tower is your model material 
whatever head that may be. Whether it's Extruder 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, everybody in the car, so come on, let's ride. you want to make sure that it is the right actual extruder for your material. This can be a problem when you're dealing with with something where it's PLA and PETG, where those materials do not stick together. If your wipe tower, prime tower, whatever you want to call it, is made out of material that doesn't stick to itself, it's going to fall over and look like crap. When we change it over to feature type, it's a lot easier to see this model and kind of understand what's going on. We also got rid of the support material in this hole. It's likely not necessary. And while the XL doesn't have the greatest cooling on the planet, this will be fine. It will bridge this without an issue. Let's say you want to load in a brand new file. We can see here that when we go to slice it, our color change is still present. This color change is persistent in your instance of Prusa Slicer. No matter what version that you're on, if you do not get rid of that, it won't go away. And while there is that tiny little warning, it would be nice if this actual warning was what popped up on the screen. Love to know, would, do you agree with me on this? I think it's a relatively simple change, an easy thing to add into the next Prusa Slicer instance because the slicer even knows it shouldn't be there. So when Pete would go to actually slice and print the file, that won't even matter. It won't even show up. But certainly if you're going through this thing layer by layer or like this where it's a relatively thin part, and you can see the purge tower, you're gonna wonder what the heck happened. If you are using Purge Slicer and you're dealing with this, check this sidebar. Might be as simple as making sure you remove that color change. But I'd love to know from you all, have you found these little pesky things that on the surface feel like a bug? Even sometimes can be confirmed by tech support when in reality, it's not a bug. It's kind of a feature but it's a feature that could use just a little bit of UI and or UX tweaking to make it just a little bit more effective for the end user. But this brings up a really interesting position as well. As a content creator, I can now say, hey, Prusa Slicer dev team, can we fix this in the next release? Pretty please with sugar on top. It would be very nice to see a solution to this because certainly for a newbie that is trying to learn a new slicer where they were very comfortable with a different one, they're trying to learn this and it's just not working right for them. A weird problem like this can cause massive headaches and massive frustration. But at the same time, it would be very nice if when you first downloaded Purusha Slicer that you had the option to go through some basic tutorials. While the tutorials would have to be updated, Prusha does seem to have the marketing and team to be able to handle something like this. I think it would be very valuable. I know that I would love to see something like that. And if Prusha doesn't do it, maybe it is up to us as the content creators to do something like that. Let me know what you guys think. But if you want to support the efforts that we do here, get access to our super secret discord and come hang out with us, you can support the channel by joining PayPal, Patreon, or YouTube channel members at the $5 tier and higher, get your name listed right next to me. And at the $10 tier and higher, you get access to that super sweet discord that we've been talking about. And videos like this wouldn't be possible without those names. So thank you to all of you that make them possible. I do want to thank you all for watching. I do have to remind you again to make sure you like and subscribe because it does help the channel grow and doesn't cost you a dime to do it. That's all we have for you all today. Let me know what kind of things you want to see for episode 200. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.